Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about theoretical framework and conceptual framework and how uh, both of them are related. And I'll start off with a phenomenon and I will bring you through the process um, to know how theoretical framework and the conceptual framework comes together. Let's start with a very basic um, concept. Um, well, in this sharing, um, I will avoid some of the technical jargons. I will try to make it very simple so that uh, all of you can have an understanding of the whole idea. Okay, let's say let's say you want to understand a phenomenon. Um, in this case here, workers at work. And assuming uh, there are no theories that explain the phenomenon. So what do you do? Well, you carry out a research. You probably uh, go to um, some uh, workplaces or factory and to observe how workers work and you collect qualitative data. You may be, um, for example, you carry out uh, observation, you interview the workers, you might interview the supervisors as well. All right, you collect data and you analyze um, using qualitative approach and you come up with a theory. Um, let's call this a theory of motivation. And in your theory, you found that, hey, work motivation seems to correlate with job performance. Now, before we go further, what is a theory? Now, uh, of course, if you go through um, the literature, there are a lot of um, explanation, but um, just make it very simple. A theory is an explanation of a phenomenon. A theory explains to you what this phenomenon is all about. Okay, remember this basic concept. So once you have the theory, now you want to see whether the theory is valid or not. Why? Because you develop the theory based on your observation on a group of people who works in um, a specific company in a particular country, and you were wondering whether this theory is applicable to other organizations, uh, maybe another group of samples, or maybe in another country. So you have to uh, carry out a survey to prove the correlation of these two variables. So what you need to do is you need to operationalize it. In another word, you need to make it measurable. So you need to develop an instrument to measure them. All right. Once you develop the instrument, uh, well, simply means a survey, a questionnaire. Okay. So you carry out a survey, and probably it can be in the form of a Google uh, survey. Okay. You. Um, WhatsApp to your friends, uh, Googling, and ask your friends to uh, respond to the survey, okay? And you collect the data and, and analyze, and you, you are, in, in a way, testing the validity of the theory. In another word, whether the theory can be generalized uh, to other uh, organizations, other samples, and other contexts, okay? So this is what we mean by test the theory. Now, let's say your study that work motivation correlates with job performance. And you do a literature review, okay, um, concerning um, work motivation, job performance, and all the related uh, literature. And you found that you found out that hey, there is a theory B, let's call it theory B, right? And and uh, there are some empirical studies about theory B, and they found out that workers who have high job satisfaction are also motivated to work. Hmm. How would this affect your theory? And you might want to think, uh, could it be hmm, job satisfaction uh, is affecting something here? So you will develop a conceptual, uh, sorry, a theoretical framework in this case. In another word, you pull the two theories together, okay, before you do more analysis, okay, you pull the two, two theories together, and these two theories are going to help you to explain, okay, or to interpret, to explain your uh, research outcome later, okay? So the purpose of having a theoretical framework is to pull the relevant theories on a subject matter that you want to study so that after you have collected the data, you are able to use this theory 
to explain the phenomenon, right? to explain the results. That is the main purpose of the theoretical framework. Okay, so now since you know that probably, uh, probably uh, job satisfaction might be affecting some of the variables, so what you can do is you put these two, uh, these three actually uh, concepts together. Sometimes it's called variables, and technically it's called variables. Huh? Right? You put all these variables together. Uh, your motivation theory says work motivation affect job performance, and theory B says probably job satisfaction could affect work motivation. So you put the three together instead of two, now you have three. So this is a new conceptual framework, or some, sometimes people call it a conceptual model, or sometimes simply means they simply call it model. All right. So sometimes you may, you may hear people say, hey, uh, have you come up with a new model? So what are you talking about? What model? Oh, I have theory, I have concept, but what is model? So sometimes people are referring to this conceptual framework. All right. In another word, what are the variables okay, from the theory? The theory tells you something. All right. So you put all the the variables together or concepts to form a conceptual framework. So a conceptual framework is basically uh, a framework or a model that puts together all the important concepts or sometimes it's called variables. Okay, So it looks like this. So once you have this, then what do you need to do next? Yes, test it. Okay, You test the new model. Right. So from the conceptual framework, you develop the hypothesis, okay, um, hypothesis of the three variables, okay. Um, job satisfaction has significant uh, relationship, positive relationship with uh, work motivation. Uh, work motivation has a positive significant relationship with job performance. Okay, you develop the hypothesis. Right. I won't go into details. Then you develop an instrument to measure the the three variables that you have. Okay. And you need to test before you use the instrument, you need to test the validity and the reliability of the instrument. Okay, and then you carry out the survey. Okay, you ask people to answer. Uh, maybe it, it can be based on a targeted group because you want to find out whether uh, this theory can be uh, applicable or it can be applicable to that particular group of people. All right, you collected the data and you run the analysis and then you come up with some uh, decisions whether you would uh, accept or reject the hypothesis and then you interpret the results. So, what do you mean by interpret the results? Now, to interpret the result means uh, these are the hypotheses, whether you accept or you reject. And the next thing is you look back, all right? You look back, go back to your literature review. Uh, what did the past studies say about the relationship, whether it is positive uh, or negative, whether it's uh, significantly uh, correlated or not, okay? So you go back to your literature and to see whether your findings are consistent with um, those reported by your past studies. Okay, uh, if yes, then why? Maybe. Okay, maybe. Well, you have lesser question if it is yes. But what if no? Your findings is different from past studies, and that is the area where you need to to go deeper because that would be your contribution. How come um, the relationship? Um, it's uh, uh, insignificant, okay? So that is something that is worth your uh, attention to actually interpret them, all right? And um, after you look at your past studies, probably you can look at the theories, okay? In another word, you go back to look at your theoretical framework. What does the theoretical framework say about the relationship of these variables and whether it is consistent with your findings? Okay, so two things remember, you go back to the past studies and um, look for clues, okay, whether it's consistent, not consistent, or why is it not um, the same, okay, and you look for theory, all right, because theory is an explanation of a phenomenon, all right, since you've collected the data already, you found something based on the phenomenon, so you need the theory to help you to explain. So what do you have after this? Well, the end result is Great, you have a theoretical contribution in your study because you expanded the theory. Why? Because the original theory of motivation only have two variables, uh, work motivation and job performance, but now you expanded it. So the theory has one more variable. Likewise, uh, if you look at uh, theory, theory B, perhaps theory B only have um, a job satisfaction and work motivation, but you added job performance, so you expanded these theories and that's your contribution.
right? And of course, the other contribution is you found something new on the uh, uh, variables, okay? Uh, you found some new variables, so that is uh, empirical contribution, okay? Um, the other contribution that I'm not covering is actually methodological contribution. I, I will leave it to uh, some other time, okay? So these are the two main things. So, to conclude, I hope all of you have an understanding now, okay, because I start with a phenomenon and I uh, went through the process of how a, a theory is being developed, right, theory building, and then you test the theory, and then you expand the theory, okay, through um, your surveys and so on, okay. So by now, I hope all of you have an idea of what a theoretical framework is, or why do you need it, and when do you need it, okay, and uh, what is a conceptual framework, and uh, why do you need it, okay, and uh, the purpose of the purposes of this framework, and where does each of these framework fits in your research process, right? So uh, if you have any question, uh, feel free to give your comment in the comment columns, or alternatively, you might want to look for some uh, other videos on, <clears throat> on the internet that probably can help you to understand better because they probably um, explain some of these uh, uh, frameworks and so on uh, in different ways. So do explore, okay? So uh, I hope you find this uh, short video useful. Thank you.